So as we've gotten ready for this race, I've done a few things different with my nutrition. Um, I've been gluten-free for, I don't know, three years, something like that, or primarily gluten-free. Um, I've been uh, cutting carbs the last, I'd say month or so. So just doing a little extra training to make sure my body is processing um, other things while I'm exercising, like fat. So um, that hopefully, you know, I'll be able to last longer and have a little more endurance. As I said in my intro, I can't eat gluten. And so that kind of complicates the typical prep for a race because a lot of people can eat pizza or whatever the race director is providing. Normally I can't do that. So I've got to go into the race, uh, both, both pre-race as well as during the race. I've got to worry about kind of how I'm going to source food and what I'm going to eat. As I've, as I've turned 50, I've definitely lost the ability to, to eat poorly. Um, if I have a unhealthy meal, if I, if I really struggle with sugars and salts, I, I feel it in my body. So on average, just day to day with no race on the calendar, I normally eat pretty healthy, uh, you know, mostly salads, all the normal stuff, salads with light meat, nothing, nothing crazy. Uh, one of the things we try to do is, is eat high quality foods, uh, you know, salads, protein, that kind of thing. Uh, I decided to do Ecuador, Ecuador with not a lot of prep time, so major changes to my nutrition just didn't fit in. Because I'm trying to train my body to eat fat instead of carbs while exercising. Uh, each of us have a, a nice thick layer of fat on our body, even those of us that are, that are pretty athletic. And uh, each pound of fat, I think, has like 3,300 calories. So if you can train your body to eat fat while exercising, you have plenty of fat on your body to make it through an adventure race or a four-day race. But if you're constantly eating carbs all the time, your body never uh, gets the enzymes to eat the fat. I guess also, you know, when we get closer to the race, we'll add in carbs. Um, I've learned that that's probably one of the better ways to... Um, help your body recover and adjust as carbs when you're at elevation? Uh, probably about four or five days prior to the race, I'm going to start kind of doing some of the, the normal energy bars again so that my body's kind of starts getting used to the carbs again. But at that point, I've hopefully fat adapted enough that my body can now go to either fuel tank, either the carb fuel tank or the fat fuel tank, because uh, again, all of us have a little bit of fat on our body. I avoid a lot of desserts. Uh, I eat pizza sparingly. Um, I try to I try to connect uh, an unhealthier meal, if you will, to a um, a bigger training effort where the calorie burn is higher. Take magnesium and vitamin B and D because all that stuff is good for you. Um, and then we'll add in probably an iron supplement when it gets a little bit closer, and especially while we're there, along with calcium, so that that'll be absorbed well and we'll make more red blood cells and we'll magically have no reaction to the altitude. <laughs> I have to be thoughtful about the actual things I eat when I'm in Ecuador. Um, you know, don't drink out of the tap, watch the ice in your drink, um, bottled water, packaged food, things like that. So my nutrition is, is far less about um, what I'm gonna eat there and far more about making certain that what I eat there will keep me race ready and ready to go. Water worries me a little bit. We just need to make sure that we have access to clean water. And if we don't, that we can filter and treat uh, and, and just be safe about it. Uh, one thing I do think is important is you you definitely, whatever you're going to eat in the race, you need to be used to eating, especially while exercising. So I never try anything new during a race that I haven't trained thoroughly with. I've seen a lot of people have GI and intestinal issues. Um, uh, by doing that. Uh, now, during the race, during the race, one thing I've learned uh, from listening to other racers and uh, talking about this is that for the flight down, I bought a bit of an extra bag allowance so I could put more weight in my bag. And my, my plan is to fly down there with as much as my race food with me as possible. Um, pro bars are very popular with me. Spring energy I like very much. Uh, goo sparingly. Cliff bars are so-so. I run out of the ability to digest them during a race. Um, Element um, powder for my for my electrolytes, uh, nun tablets, things like that. When I get to, um, I'd say a day or two before the race, what I'm trying to do is source some local food that is that can last in a TA bin. Um, obviously, that could be fruits and vegetables or stuff. Um, but also, I try to find something like gluten-free pizza because you could take two pieces of pizza, put them together, and put them in a freezer bag, 
it lasts a really long time and it's kind of like eating a sandwich and your fingers don't get all mucky. So during the race, um, as far as food goes, um, I plan to um, have as much real food as possible. I guess we'll see how that goes. Um, I guess Ecuador is a great place for potatoes. So um, there's some things I'm already looking forward to since I've cut out some carbs lately. I'll be looking forward to some locro, I guess, which is a potato soup of sorts that should be really great. I think the key for this race is gonna be a variety. Uh, and one nice thing about Ecuador is high availability of lots of good fruit. So that'll be a large component. I'm gonna try some frozen burritos and just eat them through a few days. Uh, one of the things I really like to do for longer races is order a pizza and just ha eat it over the next few days. I don't trust that that's gonna work in Ecuador. So uh, just a variety of foods, mix it up. Don't try to, to live off of gels and bars. Try to get some real food in there. Um, but anyway, during the race, whatever we can find along the way will be awesome. But if we can't find anything, I'll be taking the usual bars. Um, and um, I like the RX bars. Those are pretty great lately. I take the little energy bars and I usually put about six to a freezer bag. And that way when I get to the TA bin, I can just basically pull the trash out of the one bag, grab another six hour bag or another 12 hour bag. Because basically, as long as you're taking in a couple hundred calories per hour, you, you probably are eating too much for an adventure race, if you're fat adapted, especially. Usually, I do salt tabs instead of any type of drink mix, and I drink a lot of water. The thing I just can't live without on a race is gum. So I hope to remember to take some gum with me. My, my advice to the, to, the, to the newer racer with nutrition is to work on real food. That's a really very, very common um, issue that people run into that for for the race itself your body loses the ability to digest heavily processed food pack a sandwich pb and j is magical and uh i believe ecuador will have peanut butter and jelly i think that's going to happen um, but try to eat as much real food as possible 